Hello and welcome back to part 21 of this Tekka tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at something very cool. We're going to be looking at force fields. Now, if you've tried to build any of these yourself, you'll know that there is very little information on them. On the wikis, on other YouTube channels, there are either the people are really quiet and you can't really hear them, or they don't explain it very well. So I'm going to try and clear our lot up for everybody. So to begin with, we're going to need a force field EU injector. Now this is what powers your force field. It puts power into this core, which I'll get onto in a second. So basically this transfers energy from EU, so solar panels and such, into energy that the force fields can use. This is made with refined iron in the corners, electrolyzed water cells on the sides, so get your electrolyzer out and get it running, copper kills at the top and bottom, and a bat box in the middle. So as I mentioned earlier, you'll need a core. Every force field needs a core. You'll need to put some more electrolyzed water cells in the corners, some electronic circuits at the sides, a electrolyzer at the bottom, so you can just recycle the one that you've already made or just build another one, an advanced alloy at the top, which is a compressed metal ingot, and a frequency transmitter in the middle, which is just an electronic circuit and a cable. I will say in this video that I'm just going to go over things that I feel are actually useful. Some things are very situational when you'll need them. So for example, there are varying different types of area projectors. There's a tunnel one, there's a, uh, a straight line one, there's uh, a wall. But this one just is a box or a sphere. And it's called an MFS area projector. And it's made with five diamonds across the top and the sides, a frequency transmitter in the middle, Electrolyzed water cell at the bottom, and two electronic circuits at the sides. Now you'll need two of these for this tutorial because I'm going to go over some reactor stuff as well. Now this next little fancy block is a force field core range upgrade. Bit of a mouthful, I know. But it will ext extend the range on which you can power your cores. So it's very handy. You'll, to make this you need advanced alloys in the centre sides and bottoms and tops with a fre frequency transmitter in the middle. So the next thing is we're going to make a zapper. Now if you, if you can't guess what this is from the name, it electrocutes people, basically. It takes the Tesla coil, which we made in an earlier tutorial, which is just redstone, an, MF, an MV transformer, electronic circuits and some refined iron. Some advanced alloys around, are just encapsulating it apart from the corners. And so we get you a zapper. And this next one is probably my favourite, just because... I've tested this on a multiplayer server and it is brilliant. You can hide anything with this. And it's called a camouflage upgrade. So you need a frequency transmitter in the middle, diamonds in the corners, and advanced alloys in the other free spaces. So I'll show you these ones before I head over and do the reactor stuff. Let me just head over here quickly. So as you can see here, I've just got a, a temporary solar array set up, nothing, nothing impressive. Uh, what you want to do is you're going to connect this to your EU injector, it's the one with the fancy arrows on, and you want to put a force field core on top of this. Now you also need a lot of levers for this, and you also want a free slot in your infantry. Now you want to put a lever on here, on this arrow block, and this will power your generator core. Now as you see, you can't actually click this without, with anything in your hand as you'll just place it on it, so you need an empty hand. You can't even, and I think you can, you don't have to shift click with them, you can just place them. But as you can see, nice and full. Now this has got a transmitter range and a linked projector zero. So you can link this to multiple projectors with a frequency card, which I haven't gone over yet. So I might want to go and go over that. So we'll need a blank MFFS card. And these are just made with paper all the way around the outsides and electronic circuit in the middle. And we'll need two of these. And while we're here, we might as well do the force field underwater upgrade, which is just an empty bucket surrounded by advanced alloys except for the corners. So that's that. Now if we just we wanted another in here. Right, so back over to the testing round. We go. Now what you want to do is you want to open up the inside of your generator core and place a little card in, and this will get it'll it'll go from a black circle in the middle to a a greeny bluey circle. 
Now this means that it has the ID of this. Now this, if you just imagine this as a glorified bat box that can wirelessly transmit signals. So for example, I could put this, uh, let's see, I'll put this down here, like so, and then inside it, oh dear, let's get rid of this lever for now, inside it we'll put the MFSS card in here, and as you'll see it now has power, which is cool. So it's just wirelessly transmitting the power from the core to here. Now as you can see there are lots of little fancy buttons like radius and you can make this quite large or as small as you want. I think 4 is the minimum. That's why it stays on 4. Yeah, 4 is the minimum. And you can make it a cube or a sphere. So if I make it a 4x4 four four sphere and I flick the switch we get this nice little sphere of stuff in here. Now I can't actually turn that off because I'm not inside it. So what I'm going to do is, is a little trick I found out. As you can see, there's more force field here. And I can't actually turn this off, which is quite annoying. Uh, can I place blocks inside it? No, it just goes on the outside. As you can see, if I just drain... Ah, I know what I can do. I can turn off the power. And as, Oh, it's not even draining power very quickly. Maybe if I smash the blocks. Bear with me a second. This is this is why you need a door. Okay, so problem solved. All you have to do is basically smash the core and it, it fixes it. Well, it doesn't fix it, but you know, it does its best. So I'm going to get some power in here. And I'll go back down here. Now, by breaking it, you actually, this MFS frequency card just becomes useless. So if I make this slightly bigger, like 8, for example, like so, and then I guess like one of these blocks, not, we don't want vines, we want a door, uh, let's see, we'll just get a normal door, I'll just replace this core for now, and we'll turn this on, oh, I forgot to put the frequency card in, not a good idea. Right now, as you can see, if I just make this, if I make it square as well, this is because it'll be easier. So here's our nice cube. Now, if I put this here, just to landmark this, and then if I put a door on that spot there, and the lever's somehow vanished. Right there we go. And now you can see you can happily walk in and out of the force field, which is pretty good. So next, we're going to go over a couple of the upgrades. Uh, the first one being the range upgrade. Now you connect this to your core and when it's powered it will glow green like so. And this just allows you to transmit the power further. So uh, it goes up in a scale of 2. So the next one I'll boost it to 64 and the next one will be 128 and then 256. And that's it's pretty handy if you've got multiple things that it needs to project onto. So that's that's good for that. So, the next one we're going to look at is going to be the camouflage block. Now, as you can see, what if you place this next to a projector and it goes all fancy full colours? And say we wanted something really cool like just a brick force field. We we'll put a brick in here, and when we turn it on, it should turn to bricks. Why hasn't it turned to bricks? Ah, it doesn't say OK. So, something's obviously wrong. It's the wrong kind of bricks. That was a double brick. Make sure they're not double bricks. See, it says OK if it's ready. And bricks. Nice brick house. If we go outside, massive nice brick house. That's pretty cool. The next one, if I just get rid of this, is the zapper upgrade. And it glows, the little arrows glow yellow. And basically when you turn this on, instead of being blue, it's all red and nasty. And if I get some slimes, Let's see, let's get some slime. Let's get some slimy eggs. And then we push them into here. Anything that touches it gets electrocuted. So if I just make this a little bit smaller. If I say make this four, whack this on. All dead. 
So that's pretty cool. But you can combine the two. You can have two on at once, like so. Uh, let's get rid of these eggs. Go inside, and I'll make it look like a stone brick house, just for now. And then turn it on. So now it's an electrocuted stone brick house, which is indeed cool. You can hide all sorts in here. And if you've got wireless redstone, you could turn this on from the outside as well. And the final upgrade that we've made is the underwater one. doesn't have any special properties. I don't think you can right-click it. No, you can't right-click it. It has to be connected to a, uh, a projector. And basically, if you don't have one of these, water will leak through your force field, but with it, it will make sure the water stays on the outside. So the next thing I want to cover is... I mean, there's a few other upgrades. There's like a block cutter one and other stuff like that, but... Mm, they're not really amazing, to be honest with you. But they're, they're used in the same way. So now we're going to look at the reactor stuff. Now this, this is pretty cool. This is all for your nuclear reactor stuff. And we're going to make a reactor containment field projector. Now this is a specific type of projector as it only works for reactors. And it's made by putting carbon plates in the corners, an advanced circuit at the top, an MFFS area projector in the middle, and uh, advanced alloy plates on the sides. Now carbon plates are just compressed raw carbon meshes, which is raw carbon fibers, which is coal dust in the fall. And you, you know how to make an advanced circuit by now. You must have made hundreds of them. But here's the recipe if you can't remember. And then we're going to make some other stuff, like an MFS reactor heat control. This is made with integrated heat dispersers, which is just copper, an advanced circuit, integrated reactor plating, and some coolant cells. A chest, some advanced alloys in the corner, and an advanced machine block in the center. So this is your MFSS reactor control, heat controller. I'm not taking them with me because I've already got one set up. And they're, they're not a pain to set up, but they're very time consuming. So the next one is an MFFS reactor heat monitor server. And this is refined iron in the corners, electronic circuits on the sides, frequency transmitter in the middle, an advanced machine block at the bottom, and an EU detector cable at the top. Now this is just redstone in a V at the bottom with a four times insulated HV cable and an electronic circuit to make your EU detector cable. And finally, we need an MFFS reactor heat monitor client. Now this is just refined iron in the corners, redstone at the top, electronic circuits at the sides, a machine block at the bottom, and a frequency transmitter in the middle. So now that we've got all this and that everything's been gone over, head over to my nuclear test facility down here. As you remember a few episodes ago, I blew up most of the the entire world by testing my nuclear reactors out and showing you what happens if you don't keep them safe. So here you can see I've got a nice, I've got a core set up with lots of range indicators and over here on top of this hill when it decides to load, come on, come on load, a bit more. In fact it's over there, I can see it on the minimap, like the way the minimap's loaded faster than the actual terrain, good job terrain. I've got my nuclear reactor set up. So here's the reactor control, uh, the reactor monitor server and basically you need a blank card such as this one and you place it in here and it becomes an MFFS link card and you place this inside your client at the bottom down here and it tells you what you're linked to. Now there's different channels now this is just so you can have multiple reactors off of different sides so you can have one off, one down, one left, one right, one back, one forwards and if there's any energy coming out of it it will light up and put out a signal like so, so you can light up this. Now that, that's fairly simple. The next one is this reactor heat controller and it's got four different modes of offline cooler heater balance. Now in my opinion cooler is the best one as you don't want your reactor to overheat and explode so you just want to keep it on cooler. Even though it's balance I was just testing it out. But this target heat section here you can tweak this so if it gets above this it will start using these water cells that I placed in here just an empty cell but with water in and if it goes above 800 it will start using these as you can see some have already been used and it will reduce the heat down below this value and finally is 
the reactor containment field, you'll need an MFFS frequency card attached to your reactor core, wherever that may be, and you've got a button to, ch to change. Now this water inside that you can see down here that I'm highlighting with my mouse, now this doesn't have to be here, you can have your own, but for a bit of power, extra power usage, you can just turn it on and it generates its own water. Uh, it tells you how hot it is and if it's linked to a generator and linked to a reactor. Now these all have to be touching each other, so like this chamber has to be touching a reactor chamber and, and so on, whereas this one doesn't, this one can be outside. So you're thinking, oh this is amazing, but what's the upside to the content in such a small field? Now if I just whack this full of uranium, as we tend to do here at these Tekka tutorials, so we just we love these explosions, we just whack everything full of uranium, get a couple more in there, and we'll enclose it. So now as you can see here, it's above 800 and the reactor heat controller is desperately trying to keep it cool. Desperately. It's burning through everything and once these gone, it will overheat to them to a massive amount. And if I just stand back, in fact no, I think it'll explode towards the uh, to the 9000 mark. I think that's when it starts to explode. So now it's just going up quite rapidly. So you can see it's, it's fairly broken up area around here, but this force field is damn powerful. It will just stop the blast, pretty much. I think it only blasts downwards, is the only direction it'll blast. As you can see, there's the lava, boom, there you go. Not even a scratch, there's maybe like a one little dent here. That, that's how powerful this thing is. So if you've got a reactor chamber and you do not want it to explode and you can't be able to make a room, just get one of these with a little lever on and everything will be sorted. And as you can see it won't work here because it's not connected to a reactor. And as you see it exploded at 15,342. And these blocks are actually immune to the explosion. So good job blocks. Now finally I've got one last thing to show you so I'll just skip over there. Right, so I'm at my second second test area, and as you can see, I was trying to make an underwater tunnel, and I didn't realise there was an underwater upgrade at the time, so this is what happened. The water fell inside, and it ruined the ocean, is what happened. So if I go over to here, to this second area, I've got inside here, I've got a little tunnel on the other side, and I've got some signpost here, just in case, and I've got my underwater upgrade here, and I've got a tunnel projector. Uh, it's not called a tunnel, it's called like a tube, a tube projector. Now if I press this, oh, what is happening? Oh dear, I'm stuck inside it. Bear with me. Alright, so problem's all fixed. I just forgot to step down. Now the radius is how big the tunnel is. It doesn't include the centre, the centre uh, square, so it's actually a radius of three, even though it says two. The length is how far it projects forwards, and orientation is either front or centre. Centre means it's centred around the actual projector and front means it projects out the front. So we've got this nice little thing set up here. Now if I turn this on, this will glow blue. And now you'll see a whole of water will stop. And you could use this in lava and it will just hide everything you want to keep safe. So I just thought that, that was pretty nifty. And if you just turn this off, the water just comes back down again and it's completely hidden, apart from the fact that you can see it under the water. So you can have multiple of these, like uh, a tube going down and then a tube going right with a little box at the bottom. I'll see it. I just go crazy. You can go crazy with force fields. So that's it for this force field tutorial series. Um, so I hope, I hope you've learned how to use force fields. I mean, they're very complicated. Well, they're not really complicated, to be honest. You just stick blocks on blocks and then you get force fields. I don't know why there isn't more documentation on them. So I hope this helps everybody that's been stuck on force fields for a while. Uh, there's a subscribe button at the top if it has helped you. Tell your friends, get them involved, and I will catch you next time, guys. See you later.